Good afternoon. I think it is afternoon, just about afternoon. Well, I don't know what time zone you're in, but it's definitely afternoon. We are here with Jeremy Young, CEO of Atomos, and we're going to talk about 4K recording 4K on this recording. wonderful device. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things going on in the 4K world, the pickup of it. Um, my estimation is probably be about twice as fast as HD. If yeah. you look at when HD first started, like yeah. 2003, yeah. probably took seven or eight years before everyone really had converted across. And they didn't really pick that up until probably four or five years into that, you know, around the 2008, 2009. But 4K is just doing this at the minute. I think it's double, yeah. twice as fast. Yeah. So I expect to pick up in of four years, and I think we really have started to assist in that pickup with affordable 4K recording to hard disk from you know, great cameras like the A7S, yeah. GH4, got here, FS7, yeah. yeah. Here's a little baby here. I know you like... Um, well, I mean, th this is basically my setup. I mean, I got rid of my F5 yep. because I, the A7S and the Shogun, I've got everything I could possibly need. Yeah, and it's, um, you know, it's nice and lightweight. I was, uh, you know, I was holding it one-handed there, yep. and I can, you know, I've got a pretty stable recording going on there. Because the important thing with, with the A7S is so small, but when you're shooting 4K, you need a high resolution screen to see Absolutely. focus, to see, to see exposure. And, and, so and this is 1920 by 1080, isn't it? Yeah, IPS. 1920 by 1200 with the bottom 120 pixels as the, uh, the menu system down yeah. there. So because that was always an overlay on top of our, and we struggled, the more features we put in, we struggled, to, and then you have to touch the screen to get rid of the overlay. So you're not compromising any of the viewing area of the 1920 by image. No, and all of the uh, you know, normal functions, et cetera, that are there for you to tell you the status and battery status and hard disk time and stuff like that is still on there. But if you just tap anywhere, oh, sorry, let me get rid of that. Well, if you just tap anywhere, that all goes yeah. away. Yeah. So you've got a really nice way to, um, to view 4K at full HD. The, the downscaling is uh, really nice, so you get a really crisp image. And I don't think I'd want to be looking at anything under a seven inch panel for 4K. Well, interestingly, the thing that I love most about this there's many things, but um, is that that full 1920 by 1080 panel, when you go one-to-one -one pixel mapping, you're actually seeing a 1920 by 1080 frame Absolutely. of a 4K image. And so, if I look at my case there, and I just come in and hit two to one, then I'm you know, right in there on the Animus logo. I can go one-to-one, -one, move around. I've got this nice little, I can move around the screen. Oh, and punch back out, and obviously you've got your focus peaking and yeah. all that kind of stuff. Yeah. I mean, this is, I mean, I've been using it since December. It's so feature rich. For anyone who's not familiar with it, just run through some of the, the kind of concepts about what, what you've done and why. Okay, so from the sensor of cameras is the number one. So we call our products Ninja, Samurai, Shogun. They're assassins, and what are they the assassin of? It's MPEG and media cost. So we're using you know, off-the-shelf hard disks that we test thoroughly, and then we put them on our reliable recommended list. Yeah. Um, we give you the caddy, you buy the disk locally. You, know, you can go online to Amazon or PC well, World. I think I worked it. out, it was, it's about, around about 60 pounds, 60, 70 pounds for a 240 gig SSD. That's pretty cheap. It's pretty cheap, and that'll give you um, about an hour of ProRes HQ and a couple of hours of LT. And now we've got DNX HR, which is uh, their HQX format, which is their 10-bit uh, format, and then you go down in bit rate down from there. So we're recording 880 megabits a second from the sensor of the camera. ProRes is, and DNX are really nice intermediate codecs, obviously, but if you imagine a poster is your iframe, and then when you ship the poster, usually you roll it up. When you get it to the other side, there might be some slight you know, curling of it, but it's pretty much the same as when you send it. If you're going to send MPEG, the equivalent, that's folding up that poster into really tiny folded pieces. You can decode it, but there's some image quality loss, you've got some creases in it. That's the difference. So we're recording that pristine quality from the sensor in a format that is perfect for today's CPUs. The editing packages can be honed and tuned for them, and they fit onto normal hard disks. Whereas we, if we crank up six times, which is what the minimum, com the maximum compression of, um, sorry, minimum compression of ProRes and DNX is a basically a six to one from the uncompressed. If you went uncompressed, now you can't use SSDs. Now you can't use affordable media, and now you're back to big banks of RAID arrays. To so your, your whole philosophy, Jeremy, is all about providing great tools, but not overdoing 
what you're putting into the box because it's what you need, not necessarily, oh, we've got this technology, so let's stick it in because that makes things more expensive. And you're all about affordability and fully featured, aren't you? Yeah, and I think people are, you know, some people struggle with it's only $2,000 or 1,200 pounds for this product. And they're like, I don't really, I, maybe I don't trust it. Maybe it's too cheap. Well, most of, it's like DV. Do you remember DV? That was where I grew up. All the broadcasters said, DV, that's really crap. We're going to go digital, DigiBeta. Yeah. And everyone went DigiBeta until they needed to cut costs. They're like, actually, this DV's all right. And they started to use DV. And by the end of DV's life, it was the de facto standard for, movie, for shooting for news and also for the run and gun. And even in the studio as a second and third camera because of the affordability of it. 80% of the market for DV was hobbyists and single man bands doing video production for money. And so that category is the category that we are going for with this type of combo. What, we, what I love about what we're doing and what companies like Sony, Panasonic, these amazing sensor making companies, and I urge customers to really look at the sensor they're using, that's the true measure of the image quality you're gonna get, and then we just make sure we record the best from that sensor. And if you look at what's, what's happened in the last, um, let's say, five years, students or I'll say wannabe independent filmmakers can now go and buy this combo for $4,000 or two and a half thousand pounds. They can buy two of them, maybe borrow from their mum and dad or get a loan or something. They can then have the same quality as a Hollywood production. Yeah. What does that mean? It means now it's a race of creativity and intellect not how much money's in your pocket. And I think that's exciting. That's when a creative boom really happens. Yeah, well I mean, let's talk about some of the other stuff you got going on here. We, I used this the other day, we've now got the Sun Hood available yes. for the Shogun. Now, it does come in black as well. It does come in black as well. <laughs> um, People however, we're selling three online. to one <laughs> and the on yellow. the uh, yellow one. <laughs> I think we, we've got, so that sits on there. This front panel is a um, removable, yeah, I'll just get you to hold that yeah. for me, mate. This front panel is a magnetic removable panel. I used this the other day, it's brilliant, because it allows you to just kind of have this letterbox and, and all the extraneous light uh, disappears. And I love this, the, the hands go underneath to adjust all the Yeah, you go in settings. and you can actually touch the screen there. Because that's the, our old sun hood we cut off here so you can still use the touch panel, but people were, were not happy with the fact that the light get, goes yeah. in the sides. So we just wanted to box it up as best we can. So it's pretty easy to put on. You've got screw threads at the top that you put into our top and bottom screw threads. This is magnet and Velcro to really lock it in there. And it just wraps around and then this just... And, and packs nice and flat. Because what I like about this is, I mean, I wrap this in a, a donkey cloth yes. to stick it in my camera bag. Small exactly. compact. And then what we've got here, we've got the new power management system, which yeah, I know you've been talking about for a while. Yeah, power station. So you've got your indicators on the front there. We've got two batteries on the back. And we've got three DC outs. I'm using two of them here, one to power the Shogun. And there's a battery on the back just to back it up. And the other one is powering the camera through a dummy... I'll pull that out, see if I can get that. Yes. A dummy battery. Because you know the there. A7S batteries, you know, they're not they're not great. <coughs> they don't last a huge amount of time. And no, they're not. And having one power system that powers everything. Yeah, so it powers we call it, you know, the, it's a power station like a power station is for a city. That's why we called it that. And yeah, what it what it does is give you this our patented continuous power, where one battery goes down, it switches to the other side while you then take it off. We've also got USB chargers, because these cameras are USB charged and they charge the battery internally if you're using the battery. And it, it's two amps, so you can charge your iPad as well Great. while you're on the road. And you mentioned something to me this morning, we, we bumped into each other walking up to the show, that it's also a fast charger. Yes, it's a really fast charger. So it does two of these batteries in one hour. Wow. So that means when you get back after a day of shooting, and this will give you between two and three hours for the Shogun. But you could also, at lunch, if you got a lunch break, plug and it in and just online. charge up. Exactly, we, you know, we think that that Mobile battery. So what you've got here with these three batteries is damn near the equivalent of you know a V-Lock Anton Bauer type of system. It's much more um, user friendly for the smaller cameras. And these are very inexpensive batteries. I mean, there's so many third-party battery manufacturers making these. So you yes, you know you're focusing on high quality, making making it as economically as you can so that it keeps it affordable. So which means as you say, I've got I've got two A7S systems now. And if you've got two A7S systems with two showguns, two power management, you have got this incredibly powerful shooting kit. Exactly, and you know, we're 500 grams, about 600 with the battery on there and a hard disk in there. And then this is around 250 grams, plus the batteries, which takes you to about 400. And then the camera, I think, is around 400 as yeah. well. So you're, you're at like a kilo to a kilo and a half. 
Now there's some massive cameras out there at the moment, where you're like, you know, yeah. tanks. This whole solution is much lighter and applies to those situations where you need that portability. So yeah, yeah we are focused on affordability, quality, and just giving 4K to the masses and giving them that, look, it plays back. It's got editing on it. Come and discover, you know, at Adamus.com all of the features in yeah. the Shogun, and you, I don't think you'll be disappointed. Let's also talk about how it ships. Just mm. stick that down for a second because I'll grab it for you. Put that way um, down. You know, when this my package arrived in December, I was pre pretty blown away by just how much is in the box. Yeah, so we teamed up with a great company called HPRC. Yeah, they're based Italian out of company. Italy. They're, it's a um, polycarbonate and ABS-based product, which means it's nice and tough. Yeah, it means in cold weather you're not going to get any cracking or things breaking off, and I really like their design. Yeah. You know, they're, they're one of those Italian nice design companies. So, you know, it ships like that, it's got a nice robust handle for you. So it's ready to go, it's you, everything you need in the box. Everything you need. So you open it up, and you've got your drive caddies, your batteries. So it comes with four caddies, which is terrific, because then obviously you can fill these up with your SSDs, and you've just, you're ready to go, four hours of recording. Exactly, then you've got the Shogun there, you've got a, a space for the power station. This space is for our master RAID caddy, which will allow you to record 4K to two spinning discs, which will reduce the cost even more yep. of recording. And these are some spare battery, some spare battery holes. Now let me get this uh, first yep. layer out. Because this, uh, this is a two layer package. It's a two layer package. You just got to get your fingers in there and pull it out. So and you know, there's a lot of foam in there, so it's really protecting the gear. Yeah, well the idea is that you know, you've paid a lot of money for your kit. There's your quick start guide just to get you going. And then we've got the second layer there. So that's every, all the accessories you need. You know, one of the key things that people miss about the Shogun often is that it's XLR audio that's using in this and out. Input yeah, here, yeah, and it's got phantom mic power. So you can just go bang, plug in, and away you go. Video is locked to audio, so there's no drifting. And you're really making sure that you've got the highest quality audio there. Because, you know, creative visually, often you get there and you go, I nailed the shot, but the, geez, the audio is quite mm. bad. And you have to redo do a shot. We've got your, your USB caddies, your chargers, your plugs for the world. And uh, yeah, and an AC adapter for the for the Shogun. Now this caddy, I want to talk about that for a second because you know what what you're doing when you're recording files like this is recording a lot of data. Yeah. And getting that data off the drive quickly and into your NLE is is really important. And not all recorders have an easy file management system. You're using uh, XFAT, which means your files don't get restricted to any four gigabyte chunks. When you load the drive on the, the desktop, up pop your files and literally you can start editing. Yeah, and if you've used the editing function and export function, you're double clicking on the XML that goes straight after you've tagged on the fly, that goes straight into Final Cut, Adobe and Avid. Yeah. So we, you just pop it in, it's made this for This is it. such an elegant solution. And, Thanks, I, and I know you personally spent a lot of time I did, I <laughs> do. obsessing about this. I do, this. I do. And you know. Driving people mad in the office. Pretty much, pretty much. <laughs> Plugging in. You know, and it, everything comes up. You can see all your files. You can import and them why, into And why the dual um, So lease. this is for older USB 2 computers. So um, USB will give uh, 5 volt on USB 2 and gives uh, 10 volt on right. USB 3. So right. we can power the SSDs. But if you've got a spinning drive, they pull a bit more power. And if it's on USB 2, some of they go above the five volt, maybe 5.5. Yeah. And that's when you get some glitching and yes. often you'll think your drive's screwed up. when it's going clicking, clicking, yeah. That's because there's not quite enough voltage being supplied. So then you just plug two of them in and right. that'll up the power and so get So it's going. all about being backward compatible. Correct, and th that's what that one's for. So yeah, it's a nice little elegant solution. I mean, I have, I carry one of these around with me, um, just with all my data encrypted on it, yeah. just to keep all the secret blueprints away course, from the competition. So if you see him in the pub and he's got a drive, just buy him a drink and whip it off him. <laughs> <laughs> All good. So listen, what else is happening? You've got, obviously, DNX HR. DNX HR. 3, 3D LUTs. Upload. 3D LUTs. Let's talk about 3D LUTs. So you, just, you just skimmed over them. That's quite a mm. big deal. I had a conversation with you a couple of weeks ago, and you were like, we're going to do all this stuff. And a couple of weeks later, it's like, it's here. I mean, I was shooting some DNX yeah, for you the other like, day. Yeah, it takes like, you know, six months to get these things in. And, it, and we still were releasing the products, so people don't know that in the background we're doing it. DNX was a, an interesting one, and I'll get to the LUTs, but DNX was an interesting one because customers were like, you didn't release DNX HD? Oh my God, but we were working on the 4K version. Mm. And now we're the first product in the world to record yeah. that format in an external device. Um, which I think is pretty cool, because Avid's coming back with a vengeance. Um, they've got some really nice cloud-based solutions. We're teaming up very closely with them on metadata tagging and things like that. So move to the 3D LUTs. Obviously, these, even these smaller cameras, GH4, has um, you know, got some gamma curves that they can apply. We've got 
S -log Sony S-Log, obviously. Um, FS7's got S-Log, obviously the higher end cameras do too. Plus people want their own looks that they want to put onto these gamma curves. Uh, I know you've got your own look that you, yeah. that you like to use, and I, I mean, I like that kind of yeah. popping reds and blues, you know? Yeah, well, you know, you, you have a lot that you want to use for framing and exposure and, and contrast. It may not be the look you're going to deliver finally, but S-Log's lack, lacking that because of the nature of the curve. Yeah, that's right. And so what we do is allow you to export a curve from your editing or color package. So you could take, you could build your own look and say resolve and, and send, yep. that, send that export out? Export it, put it onto our disk and upload it. And then you've got that choice to see the footage in that way, even if you don't want to record it. It can be a metadata tag in the file, yeah. which then when you go back into like a Resolve, you've got that available to turn on and off, and the, the package already knows that I've applied something that is compatible with, with that package. And without necessarily giving away too much, um, you, you've got plans for this. This is not just a device you can use on the A7S, I mean, we used it on the FS7 the other day. We had a conversation about you, you've got some plans to try and implement Sony RAW decode in the future. Is there much you can say about that? Yes, oh, absolutely. So we've announced that. We've got the license from Sony. Um, it's, we're about three quarters of the way through the development. We are planning the release um, at the end of March, just before NAB. We've got a couple of other things up our sleeve for NAB as well. I'm sure you have. But that will be FS RAW 2 ProRes, which is what 80% of people that use that RAW. So if you've got an FS700 or an FS7, you can use this to record your ProRes Pro 4K, 4K from those cameras. Wow. Which is pretty cool. I mean, the FS7, there's a bit of a um, misconception out there that you need the RAW to be able to record 4K, but it's pumping out 10-bit 4K out of its HDMI port as well as two of their SDI ports. Yeah. Um, and that's, I mean, that's pretty amazing because out of the box, that camera will give you 4K ProRes in 10-bit. True 10-bit, and, and, and we're the, the only recorder that can do true 10-bit in 4K. And um, the, the, other, the other big manufacturer that's making these kind of recorders is, is charging clients for these upgrades. And right, I mean, can you say anything about you know your plans in terms free. of free, free, always free, right? Dan. So, so you're going to be giving away. So there'll be no license once you buy this device. There's no license no to license. buy. No license. You just. It's that's just a significant saving. It is, and it will be another, just another selector in the in the codec option. So we had ProRes originally 4K, we've just had a DNX HR, in there will be FS RAW to ProRes recording, so you just turn that on, and then the next one will be Cinema DNG. So uh, tease us with what might be coming out at NAB. Just tease us. Tease us, um, well what I can say is, you're going to want to come to the Atomos Dome Theatre. That's the, that's the most that I can give away right the now. Atomos Dome Theatre. Right, so you're going big. We're going big. Fantastic. Because the customers, especially in the US, you know, they drive a lot of business for us. Um, and they're a community. You know, I've I love shows like BVE. That's why we support it so heavily, announcing new things here. Um, and I love NAB for two reasons. The customers come up and they go, thank you. Thanks for helping me make more money. Thanks for helping me be more creative. And thanks for caring about the cost of my media. And just doing the right thing by me, the customer. I will be a customer of yours forever. Yeah. And you know, that is, Humbling, number one, but it also means that they know exactly what we're about. And yeah, it's a competitive world. However, it's really about those people who are sitting in their dens or their you know studies, their offices at midnight, trying to finish that that production. We're hoping that they can get home by ten and see their family. Great stuff, well, mate. I know you've got to shoot off. Thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, Dan. I'll see you soon. We'll be back very soon.